Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 15th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Of course, the big question today is what should we expect over the weekend from CVE 2022-26809, the RPC vulnerability? Well, there is not a ton of news, which is uh, kind of good here. Now, the closest to a public exploit we have, as far as I can tell, is a tweet by Antonio Kokomazzi. Uh, he is uh, going by the alias of Splinter Code and uh, works for Sentinel-1. Antonio managed to get an exploit working, but only against a custom RPC configuration. So uh, nothing that's uh, typically out in the wild, at least that's what it appears like. That's the closest we have uh, to, like I said, a public exploit. There may, of course, be others working on exploits that are not necessarily tweeting about it. Your best bet at this point is still uh, to patch, and that's where the only thing that will really protect you, firewall rules and all of that, it's all nice and good, uh, but probably not going to do for you much internally. I put together a quick post uh, just summarizing sort of what we have so far about this vulnerability. Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, there will also be a webcast with Jake Williams, where he'll uh, go over some of the exploit development that has been happening uh, so far. Links to the webcast and Antonio's tweet uh, will be added to the show notes. And if you feel pretty good about having your Windows systems uh, patched, there is a new update out for uh, Google Chrome that fixes an actively exploited vulnerability. And it's the only vulnerability uh, being addressed uh, with this update. And Shihu 360 and the Chinese CERT, CN CERT, have worked together to identify a new DDoS botnet. They're calling it Fodja. It sort of does adopt a lot of the elements we have seen of prior Linux IoT-focused botnets, mostly spreading via weak SSH and Telnet passwords. Plus a small selection of web vulnerabilities, uh, like uh, the usual here, uh, for example, uh, DVR vulnerabilities and uh, various router vulnerabilities. The blog post states that about 62,000 systems are participating in this botnet at any time with sort of a fluctuation of about 10,000. So reasonable, uh, powerful as far as botnets go, uh, not as big as some of the bigger sort of Marine the like botnets we have seen in the past. You may check uh, the blog for the indicators of compromise they're listing, but for the most part, you'll identify infected hosts uh, for this and many similar botnets by just the aggressive SSH and Telnet scanning that they typically are performing. And researchers from the University of Wisconsin in Madison, as well as Yola University of Chicago, did a study of various video conferencing apps. And what they looked at was how audio is being dealt with when the mute button is being used. What they noticed is that audio and video is treated differently if you are Turning off a video, there is usually a visual indicator in the camera that many operating systems, in particular Windows and Mac OS support for audio. We often don't have sort of a similar indicator. And what they found was that actually not the microphone is disabled, but sometimes the microphone is still being accessed by the software. And in one case, Cisco's WebEx, they actually found how some limited telemetry data about the audio Audio is still being transmitted even if uh, the mute button is pressed. Now, this was not actual uh, voice or sound data. It was more audio level data that was being transmitted. But uh, certainly uh, some data was leaked and some uh, voice conversation. So may be able uh, to be reconstructed from that data. I think it's safe to say if you are on a video audio call, uh, 
always assume that the microphone is not muted uh, even if the mute button works as it's supposed to it's uh, too easy to mess it up and think you have pressed it while you actually didn't press it and finally to give you one more thing to patch before the weekend if you're running Grafana Enterprise well uh, you should patch there's a approach escalation vulnerability it was just addressed interestingly it does not affect the open source version just the enterprise version well and that's it for today thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday bye